Mama Mia! So you might have noticed there were no PAX vlogs this year. There haven't actually been very many vlogs in general. And it occurred to me earlier today, I was thinking about it, that it's been a while. And I, had, I never really told you guys what happened. And it's hard to believe it's already almost been a month since it did happen. You know, like I've had all this time to tell the story I've been meaning to, and I just never got around to it. So, what do you say we, we, we tell the story now? So you guys kind of know where I'm at. To make a long story short, I don't have my video camera anymore. Because I was mugged in Seattle. That is a thing that happened. I've never been mugged before. I've had things stolen from me before. But never, like, in a physical sort of altercation. And it wasn't like, you know, he didn't have a gun or anything. He didn't physically threaten me at all. He just kind of tried to distract me by saying stuff and then just psh, grabbed my bag and ran off. So, um, so like, I mean, this is not an action movie or anything, but maybe I can sort of describe it like it is one to make it a little more interesting. It's about 11.15 p.m. We had just split off, and somehow I had gone the wrong way. And it turns out if I hadn't gone the wrong way, I probably wouldn't have run into him at all. But, um... I went the wrong way, so I had to circle back around the block to get back to my train station, right? So I'm heading down the block, I'm on the left side of the road, and in order to get to the train station, I'm going to have to cross the road. Well, anyway, so as I'm crossing the road, I see this guy coming the other way, but he's coming, like, strangely towards me in such a way that seems a little bit unnatural. But it's like, I see this happen so many times that I've kind of almost started to ignore it. Like, I could be walking through the grocery store and somebody will turn towards me in a way that seems weird. But then it turns out they're just going to look at the hot dogs or something, you know? Anyway, so I kind of just wrote it off, but then it occurred to me that, like, he was just crossing the street in the opposite direction. And now suddenly he was following me. You know, like, why did he cross the street one way and then just turn around and start going the other way again? I'm like, okay, this is kind of weird. This has followed me. So what I did was I pulled out my phone, right? And I held it in my hand, and I actually stopped like I was looking at something on it. And when I stopped, he stopped too. And I was like, okay. All right, so this guy wants something, obviously. I don't know what's going on here. So at this point, I was probably 10 feet from the train station. And, uh, finally, he actually, like, turns to me and asks me if I have a cigarette. You know, it's typical stuff that people ask on the streets like that. And I'm like, no, I don't. So I continued on. Actually, he walked into the train station, and he continued to follow me, and he asked me, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I don't have a cigarette, dude. Like, I don't know what you want here. But... So I kept trying to look at my phone like I was distracted. I had my phone in my left hand and my bag in my right hand. Well, out of the blue, I was just like, I wasn't expecting it all, just out of the blue, all of a sudden, he just whooshes in and grabs the bag clear out of my hand. Like, it's a good thing the bag wasn't further up my arm, because he grabbed that thing really fast, and if it had been further up my arm, he probably could have broken my arm, like, I don't know. But I just had it in my hand. Anyway, he grabs it and he runs off, taking these huge steps down into the train station and I was stunned like I didn't know how to react you know I it's hard to describe what I was thinking in that moment now I told people on the stream and I told a few of my friends this but it's like my re my response it's gonna sound really weird but the first thing that I actually thought after it happened was whoa awesome so that's how it feels for that to happen i know like what like what kind of a person actually i don't know i guess in that moment there was like a part of me that was thinking holy shit that could have gone so much worse like he could have attacked me he could have tried to stab me or shoot me like there's no telling what this guy would have done but he just grabbed the bag and made off, and my first thought instantly was like, oh shit, what was in there? You know, and slowly, over the course of the rest of the night, 
I started to remember things that were in there. The biggest thing was my 3DS, my new 3DS. Fortunately, it's not the 3DS that has the capture board in it. I keep that one at home pretty much all the time now. I don't take that one out with me. The 3DS that he did get was technically my mom's 3DS. It's one that I got her for her birthday like two years ago. She never really played it much, so so I kind of just took it as my own, more or less. And so, well, so that was the worst thing. There was also like a little recording device in there with some earphones plugged into it. So, and that had a bunch of recordings of me talking on it, but I don't know if anybody could get any use out of that. I don't know if they'd even figure out how to play the thing. It's really, it's weird. Uh, so, yeah, a few memories of my life were on that thing, but I guess we'll never hear those again. It's too bad. I sometimes wonder what would happen if they ever figured it out, you know, if they figured out who the voice belonged to and then started posting videos of it online or something. So you guys get to hear me dumping chunk and talking about that morning shit sex. Don't even ask. Anyway, let's see. So then what else? What was like the next thing I thought of? I don't know. I don't remember the order in which I remember things. But one of the biggest problems, one of the biggest things that was in that bag, one of the most important things was my passport. That was in the bag. So, so immediately I needed to get somewhere and cancel that thing. The problem is it was like 1130 at night. So, uh, what was I going to do about that? I don't really know. Anyway, I went and found the closest security guy that I could and I told him about it and where it happened and everything. And I gave him a description of the dude and I gave him my name and my information. So it's, it was a lucky thing that I had my phone in one hand and my bag in the other. So when he made off with the bag, he didn't get my phone. And then the next thought that crossed my mind was, like, I had this present that I bought for a friend of mine. And I was like, oh, shit, that was in the bag. And I'm never going to be able to get that back because it was the last day of packs. But then I reached into my other hoodie pocket. And it turned out that I had the bag with the present in it in that pocket. And I was just like, oh, I, I kissed it. I'm like, I wasn't thinking straight at all. And I don't know, man. Because I only spent, like, 30 bucks on it. But still, it was just... I was happy to have it, you know, because I felt like in that moment, like of all the things as far as what meant the most to me, as far as how it was going to be used for the next foreseeable future, you know, it was probably that thing was going to get the most, that was the most important thing. Anyway, and then I thought of it a little later, my video camera was in the bag as well, so he got my video camera too, so I don't know if he bothered to look at that and see what was on there. Probably wasn't anything too impressive. You know, footage of Tom Fox playing Gradius or whatever, you know. Just fun times. I do miss that footage, though. I wish I had it, but I don't, so what can I do, you know? But like I said, you know, I mean, I was just happy to be alive because you hear about these things happening to people, and it goes a lot worse than, a lot worse than what happened to me. Like I said, did I mention this already? But yeah, I went and found the first security guy I could, and I gave him all the information. But, like, there was nothing they could really do, because the way the train station is laid out, there's, like, two entrances to it. And they're, like, two blocks apart. There's one on 5th Street, and one on 3rd Street. You can go down either one into the actual station, and then it goes, like, this way or that way to go downstairs into the actual, where the trains run. So, but on the top, it's like, there's the two entrances here. You go down one and just go right back up the other. So, and the one I, uh, like, where I got mugged, it was on 5th Street. And the other exit is on 3rd Street. So he probably just ran down into the station, back up the stairs on the other side. So, because if he kept going down, he would have been trapped. You know, and he probably knew what he was doing. It didn't seem like it was the first time he'd done it, but I don't know. How would I know? I don't think there was any way that anybody could have possibly caught him, because I didn't, like, run after him. I was too shocked in the moment. But, um, anyway. It was only, like, five minutes later I told security about it, but, like, I didn't have my hopes up that they were going to be able to do much. So they told me to come back the next morning, you know, and they'd be on the lookout for, like, stuff in the meantime or whatever. So I gave him a description of the bag and what was in it. So the next morning with my flight home... But my flight wasn't until like 7 p.m. 
So, fortunately, my hotel was, like, right by the airport. So, it was still, like, a 15-minute walk to the airport, and the elevator was out on the other side. So, they're always fixing something, I tell you. It just seems like everywhere I go, something's always being fixed. So, I had to haul my luggage up to the four flights of stairs. That was fun. It was the same thing with the hotel I stayed in MacFest that time. They were, like, renovating there, so there were no elevators there, and I had to haul my luggage up five flights of stairs that time. It's like, is, is there ever going to be a point in this world where everything just works, you know? But no, it's like we're in this perpetual state of maintenance and construction. I mean, I can see planned obsolescence for, like, little things that you buy in a store, but obsolescence for freaking buildings? Like, seriously? Anyway, so, so I get to the airport with my suitcase because I'm going to try to check it in and get rid of it, you know, because I don't want to be walking around with it, especially after what happened the night before. Anyway, come to find out, it has to be like less than six hours before the flight for me to check anything in, so I'm like, oh. But at the time, it was like 11 o'clock, so I would have had to wait around for two and a half hours or two hours before I could even check this thing in. It's like, I was missing a passport, and I needed to report that thing as soon as I possibly could. I couldn't be sitting around an airport for two hours waiting. So, like, I had to choose. Do you sit around the airport and wait for two hours and then check your bag? Or do you just take the chance and take your giant-ass bag with you everywhere you go as you attempt to report this thing? Anyway, I ended up taking the bag with me. I went back and saw security the next morning, told them about what happened last night. And they went into the what they called the break room, I guess, to look and see if anything had turned up. But as I had expected, nothing was there, so... I didn't expect her to find anything. Like, he wasn't going to drop off the bag. Like, he was going to make off with that thing. So, whatever. He, well. But even at this point, I'm still thinking to myself, thank God I'm alive, you know? Like, what? what? Um, yeah, so they didn't have anything, so... So, um... So then I had to decide, well, am I still going to go to the Space Needle? Like, am I still going to do that after what just happened? I don't know. But it seemed like, you know, if you're going to go out and do stuff... And have fun in life, you know. Just, you shouldn't let it stop you just because something something shitty happens to you the night before. So so I ended up going anyway. I did go to the Space Needle, and that was really cool. I also had lunch with Tom Fox. And thank God he was there. I really needed someone to just be with. You know, and he helped me a lot in that regard. I don't know if you'll ever know, Mr. If you happen to be watching this or anything, I don't know, but... It helped a lot having you there. I'm really appreciative of that. Yeah, we ate at Johnny Rockets in the mall, and it was really good. Had myself an Oreo shake or something. And uh, that was pretty much it. So, anyway, oh, and the, and the, the plot thick, the, it actually gets weirder than that, though, see. So I came home, and I it couldn't have been maybe three or four days later on Twitter after I told everybody about it. Somebody tweeted back at me and said, is this the place where you were mugged in Seattle? I go and look at the link that they sent to me, and it turns out that just just a few days after what happened to me at that train station, at that very same train station, there was a shooting. Two guys got shot, and they had footage on the security camera of the guy running out. It looked exactly like the same guy who had mugged me. I'm about 90% sure it was the same guy. I'm not 100% sure, because it's kind of blurry footage, but he had the same build, the same beard. He had different clothes, but then, of course, he had, like, these shoes that looked like he just bought them. Of course, I couldn't help but think, you know, yeah, he's pawn off that 3DS and use it to buy yourself some new shoes. It's, like, the first thing you would do, I guess, though, if you were whatever he was, you know, I don't want to say homeless because I don't want to be, like, prejudiced or anything here. Because I feel like most homeless people aren't, you know, in the business of robbing people, you know. Yeah, so I can't help but feel like maybe I should have called in you know, and maybe told them what happened to me. Because I don't know if that would have helped them out, though. Like, the best I could have done was told them what one of his other shirts looks like. Or that he might have been carrying around a small blue knapsack of some sort, you know. It's a shame, too, because I had that bag since I was in school, high school. It's kind of crazy to think. Now I just don't have it anymore. 
it was such an old bag though, and it had a hole in the bottom, so like I had pens and stuff were always falling out of it. That wasn't until like a few months ago that that happened, but yeah, but I was long overdue for a new bag anyway, so I guess this will finally get me on with my ass and give me a new one. Yeah, I haven't been feeling so hot these last few days. My left ear right now, like I can't even understand a single word that I say because all the sound bounces off of the wax. It ends up with some really weird sounds going to my brain. Oh, and I hope that matters don't get any worse. Oh, anyway. But yeah, it's been like about a week, maybe a week and a half now. This thing has been like stopped up. I think I might have an ear infection. I'm not sure. But I finally got some H2O2 the other night, so I've been kind of using it. Not excessively, because I don't want to use it too much, but... Yeah. And it's weird, because it doesn't hurt or anything. It's just like pressure, you know? And so it's kind of been manifesting through, like, excessive, you know, I don't want to go into detail about it, but the ear, nose, throat thing, they're all kind of connected, you know. Surprisingly, the throat's probably been the least of my problems. My nose has been running like absolute hell lately. See, the thing is, my nose is running the way it normally does after I get the flu. But I never got the flu, so, like, I don't know. Was it something else? Maybe my nose is protecting me against something else. Whatever it is, my body's definitely fighting something. So, but physically, I mean, I feel fine. Mentally, I've been kind of swinging back and forth. I had a really dark period of days for about two or three days. Earlier, like last week or last weekend. Yeah, it was last weekend. I had like these three nights in a row I drove out to the store listening to Darkness by Peter Gabriel on the radio. I kind of already talked about this in an Oot episode, but maybe not all of you have heard that. So when I'm starting to bounce back from it a little bit mentally, physically, it's just... It depends on the day, you know? Some days are good, some days... Like, today seems like it should be worse, because my nose was really bad last night, and I was not breathing right while I was sleeping. So... <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, so I'm just kind of waiting for this all to pass over and see whatever this is. I don't even know. Because, like, normally when I'm sick, I feel a lot worse than this. It's like, I don't feel bad, I just have the symptoms. The stopped up ears, then the nose, then the nose. Are you stuttering now? So it's been hard for me to, like, figure out what I want to do, like, with my time and stuff. Like, now that I'm past the Friday stream, I have, like, three days off here three days off of stream, and that's always, like, the part of the week where I start to relax a little bit and say, okay, I got three full days here. I mean, the way that I'm recording right now with the Ocarina, I'm doing the comment question of the day, and that's hard, but at the same time, I shouldn't complain about it so much because it's not really that bad. It seems like I always do. I get to the end of a stream, and I'm like, shit, it's midnight, and I gotta record, you know? Because i got to get this video up before I go to sleep at 3 a.m. So it's kind of tricky to do that. Because I know it seems like it's just record for a half hour is all you do. But it's not really. Most of the recordings are like an hour long. And then I have to trim them down. You know, to cut out all the bullshit. So that usually takes at least an hour or two. So that's already two hours. But then like figuring out what music to put in for fast forward sections. And putting the credits for that music up. Which I actually like doing that. Because I like imitating the VH1 style credits that show up in the lower left side of the screen. That's fun. And then, of course, screen capping the comments to feature for the next day. So it's kinda, I mean, I was basically, I was inspired by Tyler to do that. And he, in turn, I think was probably, I mean, well, I guess Ray William Johnson technically was the first one to do that. I don't know. But, but it's pretty fun. You know, it incentivize people to comment. And I definitely am getting about like eight to ten times more comments than I ever have before or than I have in a while so I'm definitely appreciating the engagement it's been really fun so it just takes a little more work that's all and it's also it's like scheduled work which I'm not as big of a fan of I'd rather wait until I'm like in the moment or rather wait until I'm really feeling it you know and then just record a whole bunch then you know like three or four episodes at once then I'm good for the next three or four days yeah, so I haven't really figured out what I'm doing as far as moving, either. I still have, like, the whole house here. If it's, like, if I turn the camera around, you can see the living room out here. 
You see, like, out in the living room, I have the two shelves there. That's like, I mean, there's more out there that you can't see, but, shoot, I need to get some more TP, man, for nose blowing here. Oh, man. I hate when you just blow and blow and you just get nothing. It's so annoying. What are you going to do, though, right? So, anyway. Windshield wipers. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm just being weird. Uh, he's going the distance. He's going for speed. She's all alone. All alone. All alone in the time of need. Still been streaming Xenoblade every Friday night. Twitch.tv slash Nintendo Capri Sun, if you didn't know. I assume you all knew that already. But, uh, yeah, that game is really starting to blow my mind a little bit. I think last night was really the moment where it kind of sort of... Where it just kind of got me, you know. I think it already had me before that moment, though. But that scene last night that I saw was definitely my favorite that I've seen thus far. Humans against machines, you know, that's one thing. But humans against each other is where the real interesting conflict lies, you know. And you hadn't really seen that up to this point. Well, you had, but like not in the same way. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil anything. It's hard not to say. But yeah, so things are starting to develop, though. It's weird, because in this game, I really look forward to the cutscenes. It's not that I don't in a normal game, but... I feel like in this one, I just get this weird sense of giddiness when one starts to play. I'm like, oh, goody, something's gonna happen here. Because I really want to know. I don't know why I keep crossing my fingers like that. <laughs> weird. Anyway. So one of the last comment questions of the day, I called for suggestions for uh, songs to use on my Fast Forward sections. Possibly in Majora's Mask, and I wrote a few of them down. Yeah, that's, uh, just disregard that at the bottom. Yeah, there's a second page. Yeah. So, uh, I appreciate that very much, you guys. You've given me a lot of stuff. Even some of the suggestions are just game titles, like Final Fantasy IX. I haven't used anything from Final Fantasy IX. There's a lot of good songs I could use there. Like the one about friends and Zidane where he goes all crazy at the end. Or Black Mage Village. That's a good one. Or Esto Gaza. I think somebody suggested that one specifically. Um, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. That game supposedly has a great soundtrack. I've heard one or two songs from it and I love them both. Wait, how can you say one or two songs and then say I love them both? Wouldn't that just be two then? Huh. But yeah, I've definitely been meaning to check out more of that soundtrack for a while now. So, but yeah, there's some stuff in here, man. Donkey Kong Country, Danganronpa 2, Mega Man 2, Wily 1 theme. Uh, the Hiker Dance, I mean, that's a good one to use for Fast Forward. I'll tell you what, man. Chemical Plant Zone, how have I not used that yet? Holy shit, dude. It's a great one. Um, yeah. I remember when I was a kid and I played Sonic 2, though, my favorite music was Metropolis. But I just always liked happy songs back then. I didn't have any appreciation for the, the more badass side of music the way I do in more recent years. Or should I say more recent decades, since it's pretty much come to that. Oh, I don't know where we're at as far as the 40 years vlogs. I barely remember where I stopped. I think I stopped right before Nintendo Capri Sun. The channel started, so I have to pick it up from there and just see. It's almost like I don't want to talk about it because that's where Dad got cancer for the first time. He was running the karaoke show. Still have no luck with like playing those DVDs, but I haven't really tried much of anything. I'll do something eventually. I'm sure I probably won't though. Who knows? I've just got to figure out where to allocate my time. My problem is like if I want to work on something. I say, okay, I'm going to do this with today, you know, and then I end up doing it all day, just that one thing. I don't do anything else. 
So then I feel like I wasted the day because I missed out on those five other things. And yeah, I got a lot done on that one thing. But then I only got so much done because I was taking breaks from it, you know, to watch YouTube videos or whatever. It's like you're taking breaks from your breaks. <laughs> if that makes any sense. I don't think it probably doesn't, but... Anyway, sorry if my tool sounds a little janky. It's been like this for... Like I said, my throat's been like the least of my problems, but it's still been a little worse than usual, so... Hopefully we can fix that. Yeah, how's my thumb, anyway? Is it still swollen up there? Wow, it's easier to see there. Yeah, like, you're trying to play a, or an analog stick with that, it's not very comfortable. So, yeah. And it does this, like, all the time. It's so stupid. It's once every three months or something, but... But then it lasts a week, so that's like 10% of your life, you know? It's like, well, that sucks, man. Yeah, this, this, this has to be up to like 40 minutes or something by now. So I think I'm just going to cut it off there. And I'm not going to say anything about, oh, I'm going to start doing more vlogs now because I never do it. I never follow through on it anyway. So why do I get your hopes up by saying shit like that? We'll just see what happens, you know? Maybe this time, because it's unexpected, it will happen. Because the, everything in life has to be that way, you know? So yeah, bye.